Well, it feels like it's been a long time since we've had to draw up a, a negative play when it comes to a little bit of chalk talk, but unfortunately after a, a pretty negative game for the Seahawks against the Redskins, first loss uh, in five weeks after reeling off four wins in a row and lots of highlight making plays, uh, I thought this play, and this was the second to last play of the game, was somewhat emblematic of just a rough day for everybody. And this wasn't even as much about players and formations and plays as much as it is about a real core belief that Pete has. And to be honest with you, in some ways it's changing my mentality. Because I have always been one, and even the broadcast booth, when it gets into these late game moments, I've always been a fan of killing a play, of getting everybody organized, right, of getting up. And this was after the completion and the, and the wonderful play that Paul Richardson had made to get the ball all the way to the 37, 38-yard line of the Redskins as time is ticking down. I've always been of the belief that you want to spike the ball and get yourself organized and get to the best play. But that's not Pete Carroll's belief. And uh, as he laid out with us both on Monday as he did the previous week against the Houston Texans, and really as his quarterback wants to do as well. They want to get to the line, and they do not want to allow a spike and get the defense organized. So this isn't players' formations plays, but rather this is their belief, their conviction about how they play in the up-tempo. And i got to be honest, in some ways it's changing some of my opinion when I, when I sit there and evaluate what I would do and what I would do in a broadcast booth. And, and, uh, and Pete believes, and Russell believes, that there is a, a bit of chaos and, and disorganization from a defense. And if you study this play, and I've looked at it a number of times, he's right. The Seahawks get right to the line, and they have plenty of time, and, 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 and they get the call they want, they get the protection they want, and they're going to ultimately run a, a, uh, you know, a little six-man protection and a free release here after, after a check from McKissick. And the Redskins are not even lined up. If this looks funky to you, it should. Uh, the Texans, or excuse me, the Redskins don't even get their defensive line lined up. And guys are still moving, and their safeties, instead of getting out over the top of a route, they're both in the middle of the field. The defensive lineman isn't even lined up. They don't even get into their front. There's total chaos, much like there was uh, for the Texans a week before when Jimmy Graham you know, ran right down the middle of the field. The linebacker didn't cover him. They busted the coverage. This wasn't necessarily a busted coverage, but they were so late to alignment that there was opportunity for number three. And when I said somewhat symbolic or emblematic of this game, it was. There was nothing terribly complex. Uh, Paul Richardson is just running a little clear route here. Uh, Tanner McAvoy is ultimately on a comeback. Doug's on a little search route. All that stuff is out, and, and safety's well out over the play, and he's running to his half. Uh, and what happens here, <laughs> and it, it would be interesting to hear from Russell's perspective on his grade sheet of exactly what he's looking at. I think he's trying to get the ball to Doug Baldwin because he sees how misaligned they are, and he knows with a little catch on the option route, which they're so good at, they're inside the 30-yard line, they spike it, and you have a chance to at least tie. But in so doing, uh, this linebacker comes flying out gets into the lane of Russell and unfortunately and as I said just kind of indicative at times of this game uh, coverages that were unsound defenses that were misaligned wires that were crossed and some of the timing and tempo for Russell as he was running for his life an awful lot and as this linebacker Will Compton comes flying out to both cover the back and get to this option well here's Luke Wilson with quite a window to throw to if Russell could have read this inside out and just takes what's there. Well, Luke Wal Wilson also is at the 28. You spike, you have a chance to get the field goal. And then ultimately as well, not only does the D lineman get screwed up, um, unfortunately, Posick for one of the rare stumbles, he gets blown up as that defensive lineman runs late into his assignment. He stumbles, he bumbles, he runs into the QB, it's a sack and the elbow is down. And ultimately, as I said, emblematic of this game of just being out of sorts. I think, the, I think the tempo was good. I think you got largely what you wanted. There was some disorganization. There was some chaos. And instead of functioning in it, of reading it inside out, of taking an opportunity and seizing an opportunity, uh, much like the game, the Seahawks unfortunately just missed out on this one.